and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Good evening. <laughs> Shakespeare? Hey, Shakespeare? I've no idea who he is, and it was handed to me as I came out. <laughs> to be? Or not to be? Uh, what are you doing? I was doing it then when you interrupted. <laughs> I was doing it then. Doing what? Huh? Doing what? Shakespeare's soliloquy from Hamlet. It should be the other way around. It's these tights. There's nothing I do about that. <laughs> To be or not uh, to why be? Why all the serious stuff? Ah, well, mm. you see, the point is that if you and I play our cards right mm. and we do this serious mm. stuff, we've got it made, let's face it. It's very difficult, you know. It's very difficult to come on here mm. and do new jokes every week. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I'm a writer. You play your cards right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you play your cards right. Yes. I'll make it easy on you. Yeah. How? How? How, yes. Well, you take, you take, uh, Olivier. Mm. And Gilgood. Who? <laughs> Laurence Olivier and John Gilgood. They're actors. Oh, are they? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do this stuff, this rubbish, week in and week out in the theatres, and the theatres are packed. Are they really? Yes. And you mean if we could get away with that sort of rubbish, we wouldn't have to bother about writing new jokes? Exactly. Oh. And they charge, they charge mm. three pounds per seat. Three pounds per seat? And they don't get any laughs. <laughs> Even though they come on dressed like that. <laughs> yes. You play it my way, we've got it made. You've got something there. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've got to face facts, sir. Mm. Once you get past 40, it becomes very difficult. Oh, I'm dreading it. <laughs> there is just one point here. I mean, will our fans go for us doing this sort of thing? I don't see why not. Mm. They're a nice couple. <laughs> it's worth a try. Of course it is. I mean, when you consider we get very little respect doing what we do. Or accolades. That's we true. don't get any accolades, no. huh? That's not an accolade, you know. No, it isn't. I mean, there's very few comedians have got knighthoods. Honestly, Lou, and after that, you're struggling. Mm. <laughs> I do hope you know what you're doing. Leave everything to me, Ern. Play right. straight. That's the answer. All right. I'll tell you what, yeah. introduce me. I'll introduce you. Yes, and I'll go up at the back yes. and walk down. Actually, you make a big entrance. Drama. Drama. An effect. You All see. right. You won't laugh as I go up. No, you? I won't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to Are introduce you. Are doing it you... now? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm doing it now. I can't hear you, see? Oh, well. I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, well, well what should I do then? Oh, yes. <laughs> now, I mean, if I'm introducing you, you want some sort of a cue then so that you can walk down. Thank you. I'll give you a visual cue. What, what should I do? Take your wig off. Right now. <laughs> no, you'll, you better not. You'll get laughs. I can't talk that. No. no. I'll jump up in the air, all right? Oh, all right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to introduce to you Eric Morecambe doing Shakespeare's Hamlet. Are you going to jump up? <laughs> he wants it all. <laughs> to be? Or not to be? That is the question. Thank you. <laughs> See you then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, well wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just I've got to get changed now for King Lear. But just a minute. <laughs> what about the rest of it? The rest of it? Yeah, the rest of it. What do you mean the rest of it? I've done it. He knows nothing about Shakespeare. But that, that speech goes on for about ten minutes. <laughs> oh? You said... <laughs> You said, let's do the serious stuff, didn't you? Yes. So we won't have to do the jokes. Yes. Well, what are we going to do now? We'll go back to the old stuff. What do you think of it so far? Rubbish! Never <laughs> <laughs> fails, yes. that stuff. Not now, oh, Arthur, not now. No. Oh. <laughs> slowly, slowly. Take it nice and easy, yes. <laughs> think of the money, Arthur. Think of the money. Bit of dignity, Arthur. Dignity at all times. Smile, smile. Oh. They're very <laughs> Welcome to the final heat of Mastermind, the end of our quest to find the mastermind of the United Kingdom and the end of a long intellectual trail for our two finalists. 
As usual, the rules are perfectly straightforward. Anyone who cannot answer a question may pass, and then I go right on to the next question. The contestant with the fewest number of passes and the highest number of correct answers will be Mastermind 1974. And now let's get right down to business, and may we have the first contestant, please. <laughs> Your name, please. Ellie Wise, Harrow University, Professor of English Literature. <laughs> Professor Wise, the final round, as always, is on general knowledge. And you have one minute on general knowledge questions starting now. What is the wheel arrangement of a prairie locomotive? 262. Correct. When the ring was given its first performance at Covent Garden in 1892, who was the conductor? Marla. Correct. Charles Dodson wrote a famous book. What is the name of the book and his pen name? Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll. Correct. Who wrote Old Meg, She Was a Gypsy? Keats. Correct. Noel Coward's play, Still Life, was made into a film under the title... Brief Encounter. Correct. Sergeant Troy is a character in a novel... Far From the Madding Crowd. Correct, by Thomas Hardy. They do say... Edward Heath. Correct. In 1954... Roger Bannister. Correct. Under a law dating back William to William Pitt. Correct. It, it was said of this Capability man... Capability Brown. Correct. And that brings us to the end of your round, Professor Wise. And if we look at the scoreboard, we see that you have scored... Maximum ten points. Yes, I thought I would. Thank you, Professor Wise. May we have the next contestant, please? Can easy questions here? Yeah, sure, there, didn't he? Maximum points. Tell him, look, he stabs in the dark. Maximum points. Next contestant, please. <laughs> and your name, please? Uh, Eric Morecambe, Milverton Street School, Infants. Morecambe, the final round, as with your fellow finalist, is on general knowledge. Your general knowledge questions start now. Can you finish the following? Little Bo Peep has lost her... Cardigan. No, has lost her sheep. And what is a cardigan made from, sir? Wool. And do we get wool from sheep? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. That's wonderful for me, please. <laughs> please remain seated, Professor Wise. He's not allowed to object, is he, sir? Correct. That's another one for me. Put it up. <laughs> well, it's just got too much, and he hasn't answered the question right yet, Professor Mr. Professor Wise, please try to remember where you are. Now, Mr. Morgan, here is your next question. Who won the FA Cup in 1930? <coughs> Arsenal! Correct, <laughs> Arsenal. Wait a minute, that was an accident. That's all wrong. That was a flagrant disregard of the rules. Professor Wise, please, as chairman, I'm the person who decides whether the rules are being disregarded or not. <laughs> this right. contest will be conducted in a seemly and a proper manner. Oh. This isn't a bingo hall, is it, sir? Too right. Too right. That's five altogether. Pull them up. Please, I object. One Mr. more outburst, Professor Wise, and I may be forced to disqualify you. Now, your next question, Mr. Morecambe. Can you tell me the name of Shylock's wife? Mrs. Shylock. Oh. Wait a minute, that wasn't her name. It must be Mrs. Shylock, if he's Mr. Shylock. Yeah. Be, must but be Mr. Missy. McNamara didn't mean that. But technically, he is correct. Correct. Put another one up for me. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next question. In which coach does a queen travel when she opens Parliament? The one used by the reigning monarch for the opening of Parliament. No, it's the Irish state coach. Yes, but is that so, or is it not the one used by the reigning monarch for the opening of Parliament? Yes, that's correct. That's another one. Pull it up. <laughs> well, he didn't answer that question correctly. When he... He, he did say that it was a coach used by the reigning monarch, and I really must accept that. Yeah, but if he doesn't know the right answer, he should say pass. Professor Wise, I really must ask you for the last time to try to contain yourself. Mm. A man in your position ought to know better. Where did you say you taught? Harrow University. Did he say Harrow University? That's correct. That's another one. Put it up. <laughs> Your next question on general knowledge. Mr. Morecambe? Correct. Put that one up as well. <laughs> he didn't answer that correctly either. He's got nine marks. He should have said pass. He didn't know the answer. Yes, I take that point. Now, now look, Mr. Morecambe, I think that I must remind you that if you don't know the answer to a particular question, you must say pass. I fully understand. Next question, please. Are you quite sure that you understand the rule? Oh, yes. If I don't know the answer, I say pass. Correct. I say Pull another one up. Wait a minute. What sort of a game do you call this? Hard questions you asked me and I gave you proper answers. Listen, you got a mark every time he said correct. I should get a mark every time Will he says correct. you please return to your seat, Professor Yeah, but Wise. he's level with me now. He's level with me and he hasn't even answered the question correctly. But there's still one to go. The decider. Well, let's play by the rules, shall we? Professor Wise, for the last time, will you please return to your seat? This is a rotten game. <laughs> now, Mr. Morton, because this is the final question, the question that will decide who is to be mastermind of 1974. I must ask you once and for all to obey the rules and give a proper answer. Ready when you are, Polly? Now, you do understand that if you cannot answer the question, you must say pass. I fully understand. All right. Here's the deciding question, and it's on geography. <laughs> it descends from Landy Kotal through Shinwaki territory to Landy Kana. It is the most important route from Afghanistan into Pakistan. It's the Khyber what? 
Pass. The Kyber Pass, correct. <laughs> Mr. Merkin, you are Mastermind 1974. Wait a minute, this isn't fair. This isn't right at all. Mr. McManus, I'll never watch you wrestle again. I knew to call it, eh? <laughs> Full of it tonight, are we? Well, why not? Yeah. Sunday tomorrow? Yeah. Have a lie in. <laughs> you won't get much of a lie in if they come back tomorrow morning. They? Who are they? The Salvation Army Band. I like the Salvation Army Band. I agree. You know, my father used to uh, play in the Salvation Army Band. He used to play the cornet. I remember that. Yeah. Fantastic, he was, yeah. Mm. He could really play that corner, I'll tell you I'll that. I'll say he could. The man you used to meet. Mm. Every Sunday morning on the corner of Terry Aston Street. That's right, by the bread shop. Yeah. Mm. Hundreds of people waiting for your dad to arrive on his bike. Aye. <laughs> uh, there's nobody could play on with Christian soldiers like my dad. It's true. Mm. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen people dance to one with Christian soldiers. <laughs> they used to call my dad the Harry James of Terry Aston Street, you know. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, they did that, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. And that was no understatement. Hey, remember that Sunday? Yeah. Remember that Sunday when, <laughs> <laughs> when he arrived late and he was so keen to play? Yeah. He forgot to take his bicycle flip-flop. Yeah, really <laughs> remember that? <laughs> Took three days for his kneecaps to go down. He was good to me, was my father. He always made sure that I went to Sunday school every Sunday afternoon. Of course. There was a reason, though, wasn't there? <laughs> a reason? 
Yeah. No reason. You know. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it's a reason. It's a reason. Yeah. But why did he send me to Sunday school then? So I could polish his call it in peace. <laughs> You know, I didn't really want to go to Sunday school. Not many kids at 23 do. <laughs> you can mock. We were a good living family, we were. In church, we had our own special pew. That's why nobody sat near you. <laughs> <laughs> I can see my mother now singing Abide With Me. Only in the summertime when she was taken in lodges. <laughs> Respectable family we were. I can't remember you going to Sunday school. I did? Yeah, once a year at Christmas with a free orange. <laughs> I wanted to go to Sunday school. Why didn't you? We're too poor. I didn't, I didn't have anything to put in the collection plate. <laughs> I did. I know. A magnet at the end of a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs> I lived a full childhood, I did. Oh, God, there'll be yeah. cubs will be coming up next. I was in the cubs. <laughs> I can see myself marching at the head of the pack every Empire Day with the wolf's head on the end of a pole. Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was your dad keeping his eye on you. <laughs> I had a full uniform then, and I still got it. You couldn't afford a full uniform, could you? All you had was those two green ribbons hanging from the top of your stockings. <laughs> I was a good cub. I know what it was all about. Oh, plus you were in the cubs. What are you talking about? Oh, you had no idea. Get up. No idea. Give us your leg. What do you want my leg for? I'll tie a sheep shank in it. Come on. <laughs> still narks you, doesn't it? What well, does? All the badges I got, I had an arm full of badges. I thought they were vaccination marks. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. What? Yeah. You deserve that badge you got for tracking. Thank you. You deserve that. Mm. You tracked that bank manager all the way to Cheltenham. <laughs> You're only three. <laughs> At least I paid my subs. Tuppence a week. My father always made sure that I had my tuppence, I'll tell you. It was easy for him, though, wasn't it? What do you mean, easy? Oh, well, he was in charge of the Christmas Club Fund, wasn't he? Let's face facts. Are you insinuating that my father was dipping in the Christmas Club money? <laughs> Do me a favour. It was like putting a fox in charge of a chicken coop. <laughs> my dad worked hard for his money, and don't you forget it. Ah, they were happy days, though, weren't they, when you look back on them? <laughs> Do you remember when we used to meet at the back of the co-op? <laughs> it was always freezing, wasn't it? Yes, yes, in that hut. It even snowed in August, yeah. Eh? <laughs> that little hut. Old Blue Knees, he used to call you. Yes. What was it now? Wait a minute, it was, uh... Ah, uh... okay, law, we'll do our best. Dib, 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 you do your best. Dub, dub, dub. <laughs> dib, 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 dub, dub, dub. <laughs> It's like being in bed with one of the flower pot mess. <laughs> it was good grounding, though, being in the Cubs. It taught you to help one another. Good philosophy. I will go along with that philosophy. That's what we should do in this world, help one another. Should. Yeah. It's a bit drafty in here, isn't it? It's coming through that window. Is it? I think I'll go and put my cardigan on. Hey, incidentally. Yeah? The Cubs called round this morning. Oh, did they? Got a jumble sale on this afternoon. Oh, good. Good, good. It's a good cause. I hope you gave freely. Freely, very freely. You know me, Anne? All hearts. I gave everything. You good. know that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, where's my clothes gone? I had a brand new suit there and an overcoat and, and a dressing gown and everything there. They didn't want the mothball. Jack, <laughs> you gave them all my clothes. Dip, dip, dip. Thank you. Uh, I was hoping for a few minutes to talk to you about the Only Wise Appreciation Society. 
<laughs> the Only Wise Fan Club and the We Love Little Earn campaign. <laughs> As you may gather, I'm very modest, <laughs> but very original, which, incidentally, is more than I can say for Eric. I mean, let's face it, he's become very predictable these days. I mean, he keeps doing the same old stuff. Any minute now, he's gonna shake those curtains, come through and do the arm gang. <laughs> you see what I mean? See? Now, it's the arms around my little fat friend and you can't see the joint. Hello, Ern. My little fat friend. Can't see the joint? That's one of the best you've ever had, that. That is a beauty. <laughs> Arrived this morning all the way from Axminster. <laughs> Now it's the uh, short, fat, hairy legs. And how are the short, fat, hairy legs going then? Does the smell of burning? Are you walking quicker? <laughs> Jimmy Cagney, you're dirty right. <laughs> I will fill you full of lead. Oh, dirty rat. <laughs> Jimmy Durante, sit the back for your neck. the other day. <laughs> Now the stupid grin into the camera. <laughs> now it's Long John Silver. <laughs> Jim lad. Now he's stuck. <laughs> stuck, he can't think of any more. You're stuck, aren't you? I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> you can't think of any more, are you? What do you mean? Well, I was just telling the ladies and gentlemen that you're completely predictable now. You keep doing the same old thing. You've got nothing new. Oh, I've only got one thing left. What's that? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Eric, before you go, yes. I'll tell you something. Oh, I do, really? Yes. I'll tell you somebody who isn't predictable. Whom? Our next guest star. Miss Wilma Redding. A nice man. Oh, I'd forgotten that one Forgot as well. Forgotten that one as well? Yes, I have. Keep him up. Look at that one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure I'd like to introduce to you a charming young lady. <laughs> uh, not, not now, Arthur. Please. Not now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Wilma Redding. I am proud that my silhouette is curvy That I walk with a sweet and girlish gait With my hips kind of swivelly and swervy I adore being dressed in something frilly When my date comes to get me out of place Out I go with my George on a billy Like a filly who is ready for the race When I have a brand new hairdo With my eyelashes all Clouds or dare do I enjoy being a girl? When men say I'm cute and funny, and my teeth are not teeth but pearl, I just lap it up like honey. I enjoy being a girl. I flip when a fella sends me flowers. I drool over dresses made late. Telephone for hours With a pound and a half of cream upon my face Strictly a female, female And my future I hope will be In the home of a brave and free male Full of joy Being a guy Having a girl like me
I didn't know you could play the trombone. <laughs> Get one with a bigger bowl than that, you know. You can bowl a kettle on that. <laughs> Got any messages from Geronimo yet? <laughs> What are you going for? To keep the flies off you in the summer? <laughs> Will you shut up? <sighs> I'm trying to write a play. I wouldn't bother if I were you. Why not? Well, they're all doing your stuff nowadays. Are they? Good Lord, yeah. Saw a fellow on TV last night. He came on as cheeky as you like. Yeah? And he said, to be or not to be, that is a question. You wrote that, didn't you? Oh, I wrote that years ago. I was there when you wrote it. Yeah. I didn't write to him and told him. No, no, I blame you. Good Lord. Mm. It's a pipe to help you concentrate, then. No. It's not to help me concentrate. Oh. It's only that... I thought it was maybe to build your muscles up, is it? No, no. <laughs> I'm smoking this pipe because today I want to look mature and dignified. Listen to this. Dear sirs, thank you for your letter and I would be pleased to call on you to discuss the important new work you intend to present on television. Yours sincerely, listen to this, yours sincerely, Andre Previn. <laughs> Not Andre Previn. Andre Previn. Not Andre Flaming Previn. Oh, come in here to this flat. He ruined my Greek piano concerto, that fella. <laughs> that when I go to the British Legion now, they won't let me anywhere near the piano. <laughs> May I remind you that incompetent musicians are not normally given the job of conducting the London Symphony Orchestra. Rubbish! He happens to be very, very popular. And when he comes here, you will apologise to him. Is that before or after I've hit him? <laughs> we happen to need Andre Previn for this musical number. Well, I'm surprised he answered the letter. <laughs> he doesn't know I wrote the letter. Eh? He thinks it's from the BBC. BBC? Yes. He thinks he's coming here for an informal discussion with two gentlemen from the classical musical department of the BBC. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> that won't work. As soon as he comes in here and sees it's us, he'll be out like a flash of lightning. No, he won't. He'll have gone fall up to the White City before he can say Mantovani. <laughs> no, he won't. Well, I always do fall up to the White City when somebody said Mantovani. <laughs> That'll be Andre Previn now. Could have been your pipe. <laughs> Don't let him in. Now just do what I say. I'll do what you say. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> well, it's not good. No, not you as Hello, well. Hello, Mr. Previn. Hello, Mr. Previn. Are you surprised to see me? Horrified would be a better word. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, please don't. Mr. Previn, if you'd just come this way. You see, it's like this. Eric would like to apologise to you. Yes, you see, quite a while back, I played, under your leadership, I played the piano. And I also played Greek. Well, you would have been better off playing Luton. Now, would you mind letting me... <laughs> Please, Mr. Previn, uh, over here, sir. Over here. If you just sit down over here, all right? Please. Now, just relax. I would like to apologize yeah. because, yes. I must be honest, I did damage your career. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. It's I'm a gift glad I you have. brought that up. Well, I want to talk to you about that. Because it took me 20 years to build up my reputation as a musician, and in five, in five minutes, you made me into a complete non entity. How kind. <laughs> You can't deny, Mr. Previn, that Eric has apologised. Not only that, yes. not only that, he has ingratiated himself. An accident with a shooting stick could happen to anybody. Yes. <laughs> In short, we regret the whole incident. Oh, now, just a minute. Now, you two fellas got me here with this ridiculous phony letter. Phony letter? Oh, yeah, that's a one. Yeah, that's, that's a one. one. <laughs> I know it is. In order to con me into being on your show, if you two, if you two are really the heads of the classical music department of the BBC, I'd be better off on Opportunity Knocks. <laughs> I don't see why. You didn't win it the last time you were on? <laughs> Would you please try and forget the Greek piano concerto? Oh, believe me, I have tried to forget. <laughs> yes. 
But you know that when we play that concerto in public now, it gets laughs. <laughs> It's not right, you know. No, it's no. not right. During the last performance of it, somebody in the audience actually shouted out, what do you think of it so far? <laughs> and you know what's worse? No. What's worse is that the leader of the violins shouted back, rubbish. Isn't that terrible? Oh, no, yeah. How are you going, Mr. Previn? Oh. A brand new work of great musical importance is to be performed on television by the BBC. And it will require a conductor of exceptional talent and ability. Listen, it doesn't matter what you say or what you try, I won't be on your show. That's... I'm sorry. No. But, no. Uh, we don't want you on our show. You don't? No. All we want from you is advice. Advice on what? Well, you see, let me put it this way. Ernie should really tell you this because mm. he's in charge at the moment and he's right. the one smoking the pipe. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're having him swept next week. Yes. <laughs> we are having him swept, are Yes, we? I'm being swept. Yeah. 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 Now, um, I'll, I'll tell him. Explain. I'll tell yes, him. Right. Yeah. Right. You see, the only conductors, the only type of conductor that we know are people like uh, Joe Loss. Now, nothing against Joe, a nice man. <laughs> you know Joe? No. <laughs> well, he speaks very well of you. Yeah. Oh, However you say. <laughs> the thing being, that we don't want anybody who, after the first movement, will stand up and shout, take your partners for a hokey-cokey. <laughs> and Joe might. Yeah. Mm. Who was the fellow we had in mind, Eric? Kenny Ball. <laughs> no, 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 more, no, more distinguished than him. Hackabilk. <laughs> no, he looks like Hackabilk. Benjamin Britten. That's the one. He's the one. <laughs> Is he any good? Benjamin Britten? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, he's not bad. We're on the right track. We're on the right track. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Though Benjamin Britten happens to be a very good friend of mine. Yes. And I would hate to think that he would suffer the same indignity as I did. <laughs> well, you can tell your friend that uh, he will be dealing with two people who have received a very sound musical education. Yeah. Where? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you where, Sunbeam. <laughs> Milverton Street School? <laughs> Milverton Street School. Oh, you've heard of it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every Friday morning after scripture, Miss Turnbull used to play all the cl classics to us. All the classics. Oh, all the mm. classics. classics, yeah. The Dream of All Women? Mm. <laughs> There's black notes in that one, you know. Black notes! I shook him, hey, yes, I shook him that. Oh, that's I'll tell you something else, it was yes. Miss Turnbull that got him to take up piano lessons. Oh, you took piano lessons, did you? Mm. Of course. How many? <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. Two. Yes. It was the left hand on Monday and the right hand on Thursday. <laughs> the trouble was I could never make it on the Thursday. That's why I can only play with the left hand. It's a pound a lesson. Five bob if you took your own piano. <laughs> Want to see the marks on my back from oh, Pompey Garden? <laughs> Mr. Moore, you, you, you seem to forget. You seem to forget that I have heard you play the piano. And I, uh, I wasn't very impressed. <laughs> well, the point was, of course, is that you've only heard me play one piece. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, if you could just walk over it's here, I'll show you. This way. Well, this way. Thank you yes, 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 very much. Yes. After you. Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, please. That's very good. It's more than I thought. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, what would you like? Um, how about, uh, how about a little Debussy? Good idea. Help yourself. See the drinks covered. <laughs> what would you say to... Honeysuckle rose. Not a lot. Tell them after the show it will be Benjamin Britten who will be presented to her. Good idea. Yes. <laughs> did you did you say presented to uh, her? Well, it's uh, it's all very hush hush, you see. But it's uh, we've got to keep it quiet. We can't talk about. I mean, it. you on. honestly mean to say that she is going to attend this performance? <laughs> mm. 
not only that, <laughs> but there's a 50-50 chance that she'll be bringing the sword with her. <laughs> So if we could just have the, uh, Benjamin Britten's telephone number, please. Yes, well, now, uh, boys, I've, I've been thinking... Oh, please, and, sit down. Uh, Take the weight off your arpeggios. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you did say that whoever conducts this important new musical work for you will get to meet uh, her. <laughs> See, Benjamin Britten, I mean, he's... Uh, Benjamin Britten's good. Oh, yeah. He's good, he's very good, but, but he's not, he's not that good. I mean, how can I put this to you uh, accurately? I mean, uh, he's very, uh, he's very expensive. Mm. Now, I, I would be willing to take a cut, do it quite cheap, you know, because of the... <laughs> <laughs> See, Eric, I mean... Greek concerto. That that Greek concerto. That wasn't that wasn't really all your fault. No, no. Boys, I've I've been thinking, and, and I mean, I'd like to be the one to conduct this important new work for you. What do you think? Impossible. No. Oh, please. Just... I'll talk him into it. Don't worry. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> what do you think? We've got him hooked. Yeah. He's like a salmon in shallow water. He can't move. He can't move. Uh, uh, did you say uh, cheap? Yes. Uh, how cheap? How cheap? For nothing? Ah. Uh, that's your lost offer? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I think I've seen that walking along with me. That's absolutely my business. Andre, you're a very lucky man. The work that you are about to conduct is absolutely fantastic! <laughs> like wine. How I like hers, and she likes mine. Oh, what a combination. No wonder we're in love. She can cook, she can sew, she has charms for the taste. I have arms that fit her waist. What a perfect combination. No wonder we're in love. Oh, she taught me one thing. Love is only what you make it. I can only tell you one more thing. She can dish it out and I can take it. We both seem to want the family. Cause I want twins and so does she. The perfect combination. No wonder we're in love. Remember, I said to you earlier on in the show that Eric was very predictable. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen now. He's going to do exactly the same thing. He's going to shake those curtains and he's going to come through and do the arm gag. Only this time, I'm not going to let him. Now, come here, you! Will you stop keep... <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought you were Eric. You and that... that... Dolt of a partner of yours have made me look ridiculous again. Yeah, I, yeah. Once again, you got me on the show under false pretense. How dare you, sir? No, not oh, false pretenses. Oh, all oh, right. Now you... then, where is she? Where, where is she? Yeah. Uh, well, um, what can I say? What can <coughs> I say? <coughs> Hello! How nice to see you again, Andrew. <laughs> Never mind that. Where is she? Uh, yes, where is she? Where's who? Her! 
Ah! <laughs> yes. Yes. yes! Ah, now, yes. she was on her way here mm -hmm. in the coach right. when she suddenly realised that she had to go back, she hadn't fed the corgis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fixed, don't worry about it. Good Lord! Well, here she is now! Oh, well. Not the Queen, that's Mrs. Mills. <laughs> the Queen of the, the Ivories. <laughs> the Palace oh, this I... week? What? The Palace, palace this the... week and Hippodrome next week. Oh, how can I get myself into these things? Everybody warned me. Everybody said, don't go. My friends told me they might. The twins, how old are they? Four years old. Little fellas, they said, Papa, don't go. But me, no, Mark, and otherwise, oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> Sadie has no sense of humor, is yes. he? Yes. <laughs> Musician, isn't he? You reckon? Yeah, typical. Sun from up above, bring me fun, get him on, me sunshine. 